What's up guys, this is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. I post these every Sunday and we also get a written report out for you in the Watchlist channel. So today um, we're going to be going over five setups. Um, it's going to be four long setups, one short. And then we're also going to go over the indexes. So we'll go over the ES, the S&P 500, um, NQ, which is the NASDAQ futures, YM, which is the Dow, um, and then the VIX and the dollar as well. All right, so let's go into our first one. This is SOXL. So this is actually a 3X leveraged um, semiconductor ETF. So this will have like your, you know, NVIDIA, AMD, um, probably like Intel, you know, all weighted into this index. Um, and then it's leveraged 3X. So you can see we have a downtrend line. Um, we got test one, test two, Test number three breaks out. Kind of does a little back test right here. Um, and you can see it closed with a really nice candle on Friday. Um, really good volume down here. Uh, one could argue that this is peak volume. So once it hit the bottom here, you could see, you know, maybe institutions are starting to, you know, accumulate down here. But breakouts are really nice. Um, you'd be looking for a move back to this previous. Um, this previous support right here. So that's at about 10.53, so $10.53. Let's get our brush out real quick. So we'll take our brush. Um, it'd be a, probably a quick move, and then you'd probably see some resistance right there, very short term. Um, so maybe be a quick day trade. Let's get out of this real quick, okay? But you can also see we do have a small gap right here as well. So right click that, pick the gap, and you can see. So yep, that's it. That's our little gap. Um, if it can get over that 1053 resistance, there's a really good chance that um, you know it can fill that small gap and then maybe go up to the um, 1253 or uh, 1213 resistance right here. So yep, that's SOXL. We'd we'll be looking at calls on this. So this is a bullish breakout. Um, bullish, you know, downtrend line break, and then um, chance to fill the gap. If we can get over 1053, you can maybe see 1213. Um, stop loss. I would try to add those just so you have something to go off. Um, for a day trade, you'd be looking at you know this low right here, that little 848. Um, if you're doing a swing trade, you know you'd have to have it under 52 week low, which is usually um, a good stop loss. Okay. So then we'll go into our next one. This is Verizon. So the ticker symbol VZ. You can see another downtrend line breakout. You got one test, two, three, test number four. And you do have this 3770 um, resistance right here. And I marked it with the yellow so you can you know highlight the fact that this is a pretty important resistance level. Um, you'd want to see it, you know, get over it, break, retest, hold it, and then maybe go higher. So you want to see a breaking and holding over this, maybe do a back test, and then try to go higher. So just like we, um, I pointed out on the ES last week, we wanted to get over that October peak, right? And then we wanted to break out, we wanted to back test, then go higher. And that's exactly what we did. So we'll go into that when we get into ES, but I just wanted to compare the structures. So looking for that um, 37.70 break, looking for it to hold, and you maybe see a move you know, back up to the supply, maybe even this little 50 EMA right there. Um, yeah, so just using the supply and the moving average as a target. Um, if it can do better than that, you know, you'd have to start drawing in more supplies because there's another one right here and there's another supply right here. Um, there's old support over here, so, but you know, we're keeping it, let's see what this um, percentage would be. So if you entered at 370, let's say like 37.75, you went up to supply, you're catching about a 5% move, you know, just off the equity. Um, with options, that's obviously leveraged. So you'd be making a little more than, you know, much more than 5%, depending on your expiration. Um, stop loss on this. Let's see, it looks like there's a little demand zone base candle right here. So let's draw in our demand. Um, you probably need your stop loss under the demand zone low. And you can see over here, 
that's um, 3613. And then the top of the zone is, you know, 3669. Just drag this over a little bit. So yeah, that would be your stop loss in like a day trade, or if it went back inside the downtrend, um, that would also be, you know, I'll even add the brush down here, that way we gotta go look for it over there. So if it, you know, faked out, went back in the downtrend line, um, your downtrend breakout would probably be invalid. So you'd wanna go ahead and, you know, stop out. But the good thing about Verizon, um, if you're in a swing trade, there's a lot of cushion, right? You got a demand zone here, you get a demand zone here. Um, this is a rally base drop. This one uh, in the middle, it's a rally base rally. So yeah. So you can see you just got you got two zones for cushion. Um, it'd be good for swing trading, but day trades, short term trades, you, you know, sometimes you need a tight stop. So just watch those. Next, we're going to Riot. So this is Riot blockchain. Um, this is a crypto play on the stock market. Um, another one that you, you know you could watch too is like Mara. It's a ticker symbol M A R A. Um, they have a little bit of Bitcoin and Ether holdings, and I think they do like mining and stuff too. But um, usually a pretty hot um, crypto play when crypto is running on its own markets. Um, sometimes this you know will run um, for equities. But you can see really nice falling wedge breaks out, hits this nasty supply. I'll even label it for you real quick. So hits the top of the supply, comes back down, um, and then holding a back test. So this little hammer or bullish candle right here, um, you know, is a good sign that it is holding the back test. And you more than likely see a move back up to the supply or probably try to, you know, reject around there. If you could get oversupply, you'd be looking for it to hold over it, break, retest, and then head up to this next eight um, eight dollars and sixty cents area. So yeah, um, short term supply. If it can get over, looking for it to make a base off that off the top, and then you know head up to the next resistance. Stop loss um, for a day trade. You'd probably be looking under Friday's low right there. Um, pretty typical. Uh, or if it, you know, same thing with the other downtrend lines. If it, you know, went back inside, um, you're more than likely going to get invalidated, and uh, or it could even spend time chopping around here, back testing more before going higher. So, you know, just watch that and um, make sure you're making good decisions and you know taking good option contracts. Adobe. So I really like this one. Um, you do have the breakout. You got test one, test two. Um, Test three over here. I didn't really see a rejection on the test, but either way, this is breaking the downtrend line. Right now, having a little trouble at um, is that gap resistance and also this daily 50 EMA that you see. Um, you'd be wanting to get over the 50 EMA, obviously, but there's a really good chance it will fill this gap, find resistance there, and then try to you know come back down. So um, for confirmation though, you want to see it get over this. 330.58 looks like. We'll right click that uh, zone, add alert, and we're looking for it to cross over. Um, that'll give us good confirmation that it's entering the gap. Um, we would also know for a fact that it would be over the 50 EMA area. So um, you already do have the confirmed breakout, but um, we do want confirmation over that 330 level. Make sure that you know it's getting over the 50 and also getting over this little rejection point where you see that um, strong wick. And then you can see um, here. Let's let me show you where I got the supply from, because it's not the cleanest on the daily chart. But if you go to this, this is a nasty drop based drop uh, supply zone. Let me find this tool real quick. So you got a drop, creates a base, drop, and um, you know your bullish base candle is always supply. So um, you can see just nasty bullish base candle. Something changed here to lead to dropping, and we know for a fact that was this earnings report. So that's all you're doing. You're looking for an imbalance area up here. You're looking for something that changed up here to lead to this event. Once the price returns back to the area, you know for a fact that you have an imbalance area that previously reacted. Um, so a lot of times you'll see sellers meeting up here, algorithms, um, institutional traders, because they saw other people sold up here. So, um, yep, so we're just looking for that gap. Look for 330. And then um, stop loss, you know, 
this is a pretty big gap fill, so this would be need to be a swing trade, um, mostly. If you were trying to, you know, just catch a date trade and maybe fill a little quarter, or half of the gap, um, you would need a stop loss under this little structure right here. That's like 316. Um, it'd probably break under that flush. Um, per swing trade, you'd, you know, 52 week low max, although that would give you a pretty big drawdown. So you want to be careful with that. Um, maybe even use my suggestion of, you know, if it went back inside the downtrend, you know, you'd probably need to go ahead and exit. So yeah, that's Adobe, um, over 330, looking for a gap fill. Main rejection area would probably be this week of supply. Next, we'll go into CVX. So this is an oil play, um, one of the biggest holdings in the XLD. So this uh, CVX and Exum both make up about 15 to 20%, I believe, of the XLE ETF. So if you see these two moving, it's most likely going to replicate the, you know, that's what pretty much makes Exile do what it does, um, just because it has such a high weighting. And obviously a lot of others, you know, have a big role as well. But um, in terms of looking the same as charts, I'd say Exom and CVX do have very similar charts in terms of the energy sector. So you do have this big rally base drop supply. It's just totally nasty. Let's draw it out. You got a rally. I'm getting locked here one second. Okay. We have a rally. Creates a base. Drop to the downside. So this is a rally base drop supply. Um, this is its first test since, you know, ever making this resistance. So usually the first area as a test is very good um, for resistance. If we went down to Friday, you can see it once it got up here on the 15 minute time frame. I mean, just a nasty drop. Um, would have been a great day trade, but obviously this supply is still valid. Um, so you'd be looking for more rejection. I really like this setup for puts. Um, and I'll give you each setup just to go over it again. Um, so we'd be looking for a drop, maybe back down to this demand. Um, that's pretty heavy price target. If you wanted to be conservative, we could go down to shorter time frames. So here's the regular trading hours. Um, you'd be maybe looking for for a day trade. Um, you'd be looking for that same low from Friday the 28th. So like 176.53. And then maybe um, this little structure right here as well. So that's like 174 to you know 172. Um, there's a little bit of support there, a little bit of resistance there. Um, definitely support right here. So you can see if it rejected supply, come back down, probably try to curl up there. If it broke down, maybe try to curl up there. And also if it broke all of those, it would definitely you know, try to curl up about there. So that's all you're doing, just using structures as price targets, um, making sure you're somewhat conservative, um, you know, because you know, shorting these hard rallies does come with risk. So obviously your stop loss is just straightforward. It's just um, if it breaks a new 52 week high, you need to get out. So you'll be looking for puts on that. So XOXL, our first one, looking for calls, downtrend break. VZ, um, Verizon, downtrend, looking for calls. Riot, falling wedge, back test, looking for calls. Adobe, downtrend break, um, gap fill, looking for calls. CVX, you do have that rally base drop supply, you got resistance, you're looking for move down to 176.53, um, maybe 174, 175, and then 172. Um, you know, because we zoomed out to those little small one hour structures and we agreed that support there, a little resistance there, old support here. So those are just some areas to watch for price targets. Next, we are going to go into the ES. So this is the S&P 500. Last week, um, I'll even exit out of this fib real quick so I could focus on the area that we were focused on, on last week. So we were talking about this October peak, right? Um, it was about right here, I think, on the futures on Sunday night. You know, we're opening up right at the resistance. Um, this was our main focus all week, October peak. We did get the breakout, which is like exactly what we wanted. I said we want to see a back test. Um, previous resistance to go higher we did that um 
he had some crazy earnings reports. So obviously you see this huge wick down. There's a lot of negativity, but Apple was able to carry us back. So um, the back test did hold, rally back up. We made a new, you know, recent high. So, um, but right now we are watching this downtrend line. So we got test one, test two. We are at test three. Um, so we'll either want to see it, you know, break out from here and head to our 200 EMA area. Um, and that would also, if we zoom out, if we break out, that would be heading to our next um, trend line. We see right there, and it probably try to reject about there. Um, but yeah, so this is test number three. It's a good chance that you know could go back inside. Um, maybe try to hold the October peak again, make a structure there. We'll have to see. Um, futures only down about 0.2 percent right now, so nothing crazy. Um, there is a little demand zone right here. This would be a little rally base rally zone um, so there's a good chance even if it came down it would hold up there I wouldn't say that puts have the greatest RR yet um, you still have a MACD crossover to the upside so you got positive momentum RSI is not overbought on the daily um, I'd say the 200 EMA area would probably be a good area to reshort um, but you know we looked at the seasonality and um, you know it's looking crazy so here I'll even Pull it up for us. Go to log in. All right. Let's go to, trying to find, there we go. All right, let's go to the S&P 500. Since we're looking at the ES seasonality, we're looking at the 31st, so Halloween. Hope everybody had a great Halloween weekend, by the way. I went to a haunted house. It was very fun. All right. And let's go up to... Is that November 4th? I think that's the Friday. All right. Um, and you can see this is just a 10-year chart. You know, it does run up pretty well, but we don't have midterm years applied yet, and that's what I want to do. So we'll go to that. We'll go to midterm elections. If we go down, I mean, it's just a straight shot. Um, so I would not be looking at puts right now. Um, the only reason why I like the energy puts is because it is a commodity, and sometimes it does, you know, move a little bit different than your normal tech and other, you know, types of stocks. So, yeah, so the S&P 500 looking real good for a rally this week. Um, just off the seasonality, it does average a 1.31% return. Um, this is midterm year, so 2022, you know, 2018, 2014, etc. So, yeah, that's ES. Um, we want to see it, you know, either reject here for bears or um, break out. You know, I feel like each each week I've done this, we've been at a serious inflection point. Last week we were at October peak. This week we were at a downtrend line. We want to see it, you know, break over to head to the next downtrend line or the 200 or you see it reject, head back down to the demand. You can maybe buy the dip there. And last week was just amazing. I mean, our watch list was great. Um, I, I even got to trade two of the setups. I got to trade QQQ a little bit. Uh, we got to trade Nv NVIDIA. It was amazing. Um, but all the setups hit pretty good. JD uh, was was an exception because it didn't hold our demand zone, but it, it gapped down so heavy that it gave a gap fill trade back to the upside. So we still were looking for calls. We just didn't get the demand zone to hold. But, um, yeah, let's get into NQ here. So this is NASDAQ. Um, this is our tech features. Let's pull up a head and shoulders pattern tool. So we have a left shoulder. We got a head. We got our neckline resistance. We got another shoulder. And there you go. So we got an inverse head and shoulders. We're looking for a break over um, $11,729. And that's our resistance. So we'd want to see it break over this downtrend line that you see make a new base off the neckline before trying to go higher um but yeah this this neckline can still act as resistance this head and shoulders is not confirmed yet let me repeat it's not confirmed yet head and shoulders um is only confirmed on the neckline break um, inverse head and shoulders same thing only confirmed on the neckline break and your neckline is, is re the resistance so you got test one test two had a test three rejection. This is actually technically the test four. So 
Yep, just looking for the downtrend line break as well um, as the October peak resistance, which is also the neckline. Um, MACD is in a positive momentum signal. Um, RSI is only halfway there, not in any overbought territory. If you maybe went to the one hour, um, RSI is pretty high. So short term, a little extended, might need a breather, make a structure. Um, four hour, not really overbought yet. Um, I'd say the four hour RSI is a pretty good indicator uh, for overbought conditions, etc. So yeah, that's the tech futures. Next, the Dow. So this, I feel like the Dow like just totally saved us this week. If you go to the performance, it's only down 10% year to date. Um, and compared to like ES and NQ, I mean, those are down what, like, you know, anywhere from 15 to 25%. Um, so Dow is, I mean, a lot of Dow names carried. I mean, they, a lot of people rotated, you know, more into the safety plays, I'm guessing. Um, but we could see, I mean, just an absolute monster week for the Dow. So you got test one, test two, um, try to break out. It was a total fake out back then. Um, and now we are getting back over that line. So this is another inflection point, um, kind of similar to ES, but ES is not even close to its all time high to now, um, you know, downtrend line. If we go back, you know, it does have to get over this short term one first to get to that. Dow, on the other hand, is at the all time high to current downtrend line. So that's something to keep note of. Um, oh, looks like I need to get charged, uh, plugged in here soon. Luckily, um, you know, we don't have too much left to do here. But yeah, so we want to see, you know, either it's going to reject here, um, maybe make a base on the 200 EMA that you see dotted right here. Um, but this, all this is just an imbalance area. There's no demand until this little, you know, until these red days right here. Um, in terms of one day daily time frame demand. So you got a demand zone right here. Um, we'd want to see some demand get created up here, preferably with a pullback to another high, um, higher high. But yeah, so we want to see this holding the breakout if it can. Um, maybe in the next couple of weeks it could get back to 34,000. Um, I wouldn't say it's going to head there straight away though. Maybe about two weeks. Um, maybe it could get here by the end of the year. We'll have to see. But yeah, hopefully the Dow can keep, you know, keep its strength up. Um, a lot of the names, you know, did pretty good, and maybe they had good earnings or something. But um, totally just carried us this week, so watch the Dow. Um, positive MACD signal. RSI is a little overbought. This is why I wouldn't want to go long the Dow ETF, which is DIA. Um, this, you know, this signal right here, you know, it's just, I don't know. Any pullback, you know, you can get screwed on premium. So, next we're going to the VIX. We'll go into the data first and what makes the average. So, Friday we had a 25.75 close that brought us up to 26.26 for the um, 2022 average close. You can see that down here, it's you know 26.5, uh, 25.9. So, I just rounded it up. Um, and then the app also, you know rounds this up here uh, my numbers up so we can see we are below the 50 period EMA um, that I implemented on this uh, we are below the average now too if we go to trading view here um, we're at the 200 EMA so the VIX there's a good chance it could try to hold up right here um, right now with the VIX at the average you're getting average you know price premium so you are getting value on premiums they're not too expensive um, and they're not too cheap yet either uh, but the next move for the VIX you know we did say we were looking for the 35 rejection and a mean regression back to the average we finally got that but now since we're in the middle we're gonna want to see it stay under this average um, that'd be good for bulls um, or we want to see another close and start heading back over it for bears uh, but based off the seasonality you know there's a good chance that um, we are going to rally and that might make a lot of people mad but um, Wall Street is Wall Street so all right so we want to see a move maybe back down to 2264 um, this is just a weird spot this is the spot where you're waiting um, we're gonna either wait for it to get all the way down here and when puts get way too cheap we rebuy puts and wait for a mean regression back up um, 
or you want to you know get it up here and wait for the mean regression back down um, this is more like a middle point so you're kind of waiting to see what happens here but um, if it does stay under you know that's good for bulls if it you know stays over you know there's a good chance that people are trying to reprice in volatility so oh and it also broke our trend line last week and that's exactly what we we're looking for and same with the dollar we were looking for that short term um, uptrend break, which it did. You can see test one, test two, test three broke it, which would take us back to our longer term, which is what we also went over last uh, Sunday. So same thing. Um, I'm not feeling good about the dollar selling off until this is broken. Um, so you might see it come down, try to curl up off the line. Um, if you're a bull, you're gonna want to see a breakdown, you know, curl back up a little bit, um, or just sell straight off. We want to see more aggressive selling on the dollar. Um, next level for the downside would be 107.68. Uh, um, otherwise, if it's holding this trend line, you know, we could see it come back up and test highs again. Um, maybe even just this little short-term peak right here, make it like 113s. Um, but you can see, I mean, the dollar is uh, has a negative momentum for the MACD. Um, RSI isn't oversold yet, and it's crossing back down 40 or to the 40 area. Um, so that could be good. Maybe currency traders are starting to price in, um, you know, inflation coming down and equities being able to have a run. So, yeah, that's everything, guys. Uh, we had four longs, so four call setups, one put setup, went over our indexes, and um, I hope you all got some clarity. Um, last week's was amazing. I hope it goes just as well for you guys and for myself. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys on Monday. If you guys need anything, just reach out to me. Thank you so much. And uh, username is Alexander underscore 96 on Discord. Thank you.